السلام عليكم ورحمة الله وبركاته نحمده ونصلي على رسوله الكريم الصلاة والسلام على رسول الله وأصحابه أجمعين أما بعد praises be to the Almighty Creator the Master Controller Destroyer and the Lord of the Worlds peace and blessings be unto his last messenger the trust or the guide and upon his family, his companions and those who follow his guidance till the day of judgment. Today's lecture is an open call to the seekers of the truth from different faiths to encourage a dialogue between the spirit of tolerance and respect. Now it is the message for any seeker of truth. This message is for any seeker of truth who might once have wondered what this religion is all about, who God is, what the ultimate goal of the man's existence. These questions and many others come up on different times. But due to various social regions, due to various obstacles, they are brushed out. But remember, if a man is sincere to find the truth, then Almighty Creator must guide him. Now, few points to be noted for looking out, for seeking the true way. What are they? Number one. It must have to be confirmed by the Creator Himself. So, there must be a scripture of it. And number two, the scripture will be of no doubt. That means, there will be no doubt about the authenticity of the scriptures uh, from textual point of view or from the protection of text. For what? From being modified or fabricated. So that we can say that the scripture is divine. The scripture is from the creator. Now, we know that every individual, not a single person left, every individual in the world born into a religious environment that is not necessarily in accordance with his or her choice. Children are raised to follow the religion or ideology of their family or society or maybe the surrounding cultures. By the time individuals reach their teens at the time of teenager, they have usually accepted the way of life, the religion of their family or their parents the of their society. Now, there will be a time when seekers of truth often reach a point of confusion, especially upon realizing that the believers of every religion, sect, 
ideology and philosophy claim to profess the one and only truth. But there will be only three possibilities. What are they? Number one, only one of them is correct or all the theorem, all the beliefs are correct or everyone is incorrect. Now it is very simple to find out that it is not possible for all of them to be correct. Okay. Because the fundamentals of every religion are different. So, which religion is the right one? And how can the seeker of truth come to know it? This is the main subject work of today's speech. Nowadays, one of the distinguished feature of our civilization is the presence of a large number of religious and ethical system. Mankind has always sought to understand the reason for creation and his own place in the scheme of things. A common feature of all major religions is the belief in a universal God or supreme divine authority that is omnipotent and omniscient. Followers of all major religions believe that the God they worship is the same God for them as well as for the others. Marxism, Freudianism and other non-religious belief tried to attack the roots of organized religion. But these in turn developed into belief systems themselves. Thus, we can generally understand that the religion is an integral part of human being for their existence. Now what does the religion mean? Religion means a way of life, code of conduct for life, which restrain every aspect of life. None of the man-made way of life, code of conduct, railroaded by Pharaoh, Saddad, Namrud, Plato, Rousseau, Karl Marx, Lenin, Abraham Lincoln, so and so, ever had become able to give the peace in any country, in social, political or personal life. What's the reason for this? This is basically due to the avoidance of the divine way of life and lack of true religion based constitution as only solution is left behind the divine constitution divine religion now for conducting our smooth journey for conducting a smooth life in this worldly life and uh, the hereafter this follow of divine religion, following of divine scripture is utmost needed for every human being. Definitely, we face so many problems in the pathway, in the journey of our life, ups and downs of the pathway. Well, nothing other than the belief of the Creator can encourage for a smooth journey of our life. But the Creator, the Almighty Lord, He is not of a particular community, rather 
He is the Lord of all the creatures, all the human beings. Male, female, rich, poor, big, small, white, black, strong, weak, everybody is equal to the Creator. None of them is of having upper grade or lower grade by birth than other. All of them are created as human by the same creature. That's the reason why we can find in reality that the skeleton infrastructure of our body is same. Color of the blood is also similar to each other regardless of their caste, community, creed, language and so on. Therefore, in general, creator of all the human beings must have been a shingle one. On the other hand, if there are more than one creator, then the color of the blood of every human being must have been different rather than only red. But nothing had happened like that. It's true that if there is more than one administrator or one headmaster of any institution or school, then due to their variety of decision, variety of opinions, the systems must be collapsed. Likewise, if this art, if this universe was administered by more than one administrator, more than one creator, more than one controller, more than one sustainer, then the system of the whole universe must have been demolished, must have been collapsed. But nothing had happened till date like that. Therefore, I will say all the like the all major religions of the world which announces the oneness of Almighty God, Almighty Creator. If we can take a just brief look what the other religions say about the Almighty God. Hinduism is one of the major religions and their religious main religious scripture is Bhagavad Gita then there are other scriptures like Ved, Upanishads, so and so so in Bhagavad Gita it is mentioned in chapter number 7 verse number 20 those whose intelligence has been stolen by material desires surrender unto demigods and follow the particular rules and regulations of worship according to their own natures. So, here the Bhagavad Gita, the main religious scripture of Hinduism is referring to people who are materialistic and therefore worship demigods. That's it. That is uh, beside the true God. The Upanishads are also considered the sacred scripture by Hindus. Now, consider few verses of Upanishads. It's mentioned in Chandag Upanishad. Ekam Ebadityam. What does it mean? The Almighty is one only without second. Moreover, Na Kasya Kasuj Janita Na Kasipa Kadipa. Of him there are neither parents nor lord. It is mentioned in Shita Shatra Upanishad. Moreover, it is mentioned in chapter number 4, verse number 19 of Shita Shatra Upanishad. Na Tassa Pratima Asti. There is no likeness of him. There is no image of him. That means Almighty Creator is having no image. The Almighty God is having no image. He is having no likeness of him. The only severity is upon the Almighty Creator. There is no partition, there is no share. 
Now comparing these verses with the Holy Quran, we can say it is mentioned in chapter number 112, verse number 4 of the Holy Quran, and there is none like unto him. Moreover, it is mentioned also in the Holy Quran, chapter number 42, verse number 11, there is nothing whatever like unto him. So same thing has been repeated also, the Quran, the Quran. It, the Jajurvet further says, as he is unborn, he deserves our worship. There is no image of him whose glory verily is great. He sustains with himself all luminous objects like the sun, etc. May he not harm me. This is my prayer. As he is unborn, he deserves our worship. It is mentioned in Jajul Bek by Devi Chand. Moreover, it is mentioned in the chapter number. 40 of Jajun Ved, verse number 9 Andhatma Pravesanti Ya Asambhuti Me What does it mean? They enter darkness those who worship natural things Sambhuti For example, air, water, fire, etc. Means they sink in deep, in deeper in darkness those who worship Sambhuti means the created things, for example, like chair, table, idol, so and so. Another famous scripture of Hinduism, Brahma Sutra of Hindu Vedanta. So in Brahma Sutra, one verse is there, which says, Ekam Brahmam Ditya Nastene Na Nastakincha. Means there is only one God, not the second, not at all, not at all, not in the least bit. Judaism is also one of the major Semitic religions. Its followers are known as Jews and they believe in prophetic mission of Prophet Moses, peace be upon him. Now one verse from the chapter of Deuteronomy of the Bible it says, Sama Israelu Adonai Ila Hayunu Adna Echad. What does it mean? It's a Hebrew quotation of the scripture, Judaism scripture. It says, Here, O Israel, the Lord our God is one Lord. Judaism, Judaism also condemns idol worship. In the Exodus chapter number 20 verse number 3 to 5 it says thou shalt have no other gods before me thou shalt not make unto this any graven image or any likeness of anything that is in heaven above or that is in the earth beneath or that is in the water under the earth thou shalt not bow down thyself to them nor see them for I the Lord Thy God am a jealous God. It is mentioned in the Bible, Exodus, chapter number 20, verse number 3 to 5. The creator, the controller, the destroyer is only one, a single one. It is mentioned in Rig Veda also, a famous scripture of Hinduism. Paramasar is the reason of all the three activities of creation, stability and destruction. It is mentioned in Rig Chapter number 9, verse number 6 to 3. The most concise definition we can find that is given in Islam in four verses of the Holy Quran which is called Surah Ikhlas, chapter number 112, verse number 1 to 4. Say, He is Allah, the one and only, Allah, the eternal absolute. He begets not 
actually sharing of the sovereignty of the creator means to put out the dignity of the creator moreover who worship the demigods or do idol worship instead of the almighty creator they actually even after being the best of creation even after being best intelligent living creature they surrender themselves to what surrender themselves to the non-living creatures submit themselves to non-living creatures like idols made up of clay and dust this is not a nonsense act although all the religious scripture strictly forbidden this the bible has been altered a great deal proper jesus peace be upon him was reported in the gospels to have said you shall worship the lord your god and him only shall you serve it is mentioned in luke chapter number 4 verse number 8 according to gospel of mark when jesus peace be upon him was asked what is the most important comment was he replied that it was the lord our god the lord is one it is mentioned in chapter number 12 verse number 29 of the mark now the book of book of acts says in chapter number 3 verse number 13 that the god of abraham the god of isaac and the god of jacob the god of our fathers glorified his servant jesus is the upon him. the quran also described those who deviate from Abraham's masses means strict monotheism as the ones who are fooling themselves. It is mentioned in the Holy Quran, chapter number 2, verse number 130. And who would be averse to the religion of Abraham except one who makes a fool to himself? But due to the ignorance, due to sticking in wrong perception of human beings since years after years, the human beings poisoned the creatures in the place of the creator. But the creator had sent many messengers of him in every community and nation in different types in different times to each of their people to teach the people about the monotheism all of the messengers of God spread masses for unity in diversity and moral development through the belief in oneness of the Creator to fulfill the purpose of the creation to worship the creator alone this is called monotheism and this proof is found in pages of every religious scripture amongst these messengers sent by the God Muhammad peace be upon him was the last messenger sent by the creator for the whole community for the whole humanity of the world Prophet Muhammad peace be upon him was the first one to introduce the right of the women in the world when the earth was in dark in the modern history of the world. But the source of democratic land, the England, has given this right, this right of women after passing the bill, the Married Women, the Married Women Act in the year 1881. Muhammad peace be upon him first introduced the jakat based economy to weigh out the poverty of the world. Only after his arrival we have got familiar with few vital terminologies in the modern world like humanity, harmony, justice, women right and so on. And the advent of this messenger, the advent of Muhammad peace be upon him was mentioned, was announced in 
every religious scripture, every earlier preceding religious scripture. The name of Muhammad, peace be upon him, is mentioned as last prophet in the Old Testament's Song of Solomon, chapter number 5, verse number 16. Besides, the book of Isaiah says, the book is given to a prophet who is not learned. Chapter number 20, 29, verse number 12. <coughs> because here the last messenger would be uneducated. It is the possibility of this message was given in the book of Isaiah. <coughs> Even Muhammad peace be upon him was confirmed as the last prophet in Rig Ved, along with other Hindu scriptures like Jajur Ved, Bhavishya Puran, so and so. Besides, <clears throat> Muhammad peace be upon him is mentioned. Besides, he, Muhammad peace be upon him, was mentioned in Buddhist, Parsic, and in all other religious scriptures also as the last prophet of Almighty God. And this last prophet of God had called all the general public in which sentences? I am also calling all of you towards the Creator being a well wisher of you by that sentences of the Muhammad peace be upon him that is come to common terms as between you and us. The first common term is that we worship none but Allah. Now, here question may arise. Why do people direct their worship to created idols, created objects? The fact is the idols have no power of their own. Anything which results from the act of worship only comes about through the permission of Allah. When a person prays to an idol and his or her prayers are answered, it's not the idol which actually answers the prayers, but Allah. Similarly, prayers of Jesus Peace be upon him. Buddha, Krishna, Saint Christopher, Saint Jude, Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him, are not answered by them. They are answered by Allah. Consequently, prayer directed to anyone or anything other than Allah is of no avail. And the same applies to all other acts of worship, including charity and fasting also. They must all be directed to the Creator, Almighty Lord Allah alone, as only Allah deserves to worship them. All major religions believe in the existence of God, ultimately on a higher level, believe in one supreme God. All religious scriptures actually speak about monotheism that is belief in only one true God but people changes their scriptures for their own benefit by the passage of time most of the religious scriptures have been changed uh, distorted modified by the people for their own benefits the creed of many religions has thus been distorted from monotheism to pantheism or polytheism. The Holy Quran says in chapter number 2 verse number 79 Then woe to those who write the book with their own hands and then say this is from Allah to traffic with it for a miserable price. Woe to them for what their hands do write. O to them for what their hands to write and for the gain they make thereby. 
Prophet Jesus peace be upon him was given life. He was born from a woman's womb and was circumcised. He felt hunger, pain, weariness since all these attributes are those of human beings and not of God Allah. It's clear that Jesus peace be upon him was not God. Similarly, Buddha was also a reformer who introduced a number of humanistic principles to the Hindu religion practiced in India. He didn't claim to be God, nor did he suggest to his followers that he should be worshipped. Yet, today, most of the Buddhists have made him their God, and they prostrate themselves before the idols representing his likeness. Furthermore, over the ages, in the supposedly monotheistic religious like Judaism and Christianity and Hinduism, followers have elevated a select few human beings to the status of lawgivers, proclaiming laws that are in direct contradiction to the laws brought by their prophets, brought by their messengers. This has become the case with their rabbis and church and Purahits, monks, officials. This is a form of worshipping the creation instead of the creator who tells us in Quran, Holy Quran chapter number 9 verse number 31 they have taken their scholars and monks as lords besides Allah. Now there is an obvious fact here Allah is the sole creator and sustainer of everything. This makes him the only one deserving of worship. It's really that simple. Supplication, for example, is an act of worship where individuals direct their hearts to Allah and specify to Him their needs. Allah has instructed us to call upon Him. It's mentioned in Holy Quran, chapter number 40, verse number 60. And your Lord says, Call upon me. I will respond to you. Here Allah is the one who is the author of all existence and the most generous to his creations. He is the only one without a second. He is the only worthy about worship, having no partners, no associates, no sons, no daughters, no one whom he was Consult and no one which has any comparison with him. Praises is to Allah who is the king of all who claim sovereignty. The only one who has right to legislate for his creature. He is the giver of life. He is the causer of death while death has no effect upon him. Because he is the ever living the self subsisting the eternal and the only absolute he is perfect in his knowledge in his power in his will in his mercy and in all his other attributes therefore it is only befitting that we direct all acts of worship to the one who fits this description Worshipping anything else is fertile and all the praises for Allah who has power over all things and there is in reality no power, no strain, no influence to cause benefit or death to men except to Him. It is He who created this complex world, the seen and the unseen, the evident and speculative, the earth and all that is on it, everything that is in it. It is He who has sent messengers and prophets, peace be upon Him, peace be upon all of them, with the common message of strict monotheism, which simply means there is absolutely no worthy of worship, no one worthy of our obedience except the Almighty, the One, the Absolute, and who has no partners. Islam 
is the birthright of every human being since every child is born with a natural belief in the existence of Allah and an inborn inclination towards worshipping Him alone. As for the Prophet Muhammad peace be upon him said, each child is born in a state of Islam then his parents make him a Jew, a Christian or a Jorastrian. To sum up, one can naturally without the aid of other human influences come to the conclusion that only Allah deserves to be worshipped. This conclusion is neither confusing nor elaborate. It can be arrived at by even the most uneducated. What happens though is the human influences often turn people away from this natural belief which is why it needs to be explained. But what we fail in recognizing that all the problems we have today are due to the abandonment of this true divine religion and Islam is the solution for all of these problems what the world is facing today. The corruption, the lying, wrongdoing, deceptions, oppressions on the part of the ruler, oppression to each other, murder, gambling, engaging in bribery, disobeying one's parents, committing adultery or fornication, sodomy, sexually transmitted diseases, devouring the wealth of orphans, consuming forbidden wealth or taking it by any means so and so. Islam is the ultimate indisputable cure and Islam sets out for human beings a vision which is strictly simple yet completely logical. Indeed, why would the creator of the universe shroud in mystery the main masses that he wants humankind to understand? They are one key to winning paradise in the hereafter. How then would he expect mankind to arrive at the truth? It's clear that human beings must revert to their basic instinct regarding the creator of the universe. They must shed the layers of indoctrinated ideologies and man-made teachings that cover that instinct. Humankind must reclaim its birthright. It must reclaim Islam. Thank you very much all people for watching and listening this short speech about the divine religion, the Islam.